Let's go through the rookie quarterbacks. Kenny Pickett looked good again. Yes. He looked good again. He, he had himself. a negated touchdown, then a real touchdown, zipping it around. I'm not going to overreact, though. I'm not doing it. I did it with Zach Wilson last year. Yeah. He got the two-minute uh, the two minute work. You know, got a chance to sort of do the same things that he was doing in the first game, but in a real situation as opposed to contrived, you know, quick, short passing. Um, yeah, look, I... Where I would think it's a little bit different from Zach Wilson last year is that I think it looks like Pittsburgh are very deliberately giving Pickett a game plan that is questioning whether he can do the one thing that I had the biggest question about, which is can you speed up your process and look like you can operate at a, at a pace that is viable at the NFL level? Um, because if you can, if you're going to go out there and it's going to be three and a half seconds of play, so... If he was going to look like that, it would look a bit like Malik Willis right now, which is, you know, fine. But like, he, so Malik Willis goes out there, <laughs> looks like Malik Willis. And this is one of those situations where it worked out looking like Malik Willis. He made a bunch of plays, but you're like, but that, I mean, you can't play like that. You know what I Plus, mean? Plus, I, I saw him in person this week yeah. at joint practices too. Just yeah. saying that, that changes my perception. But even during the there. game, you know, Charles Davis was on the call and he's like, now, Ryan Tannehill is the unquestioned starter here. Let's not get carried away. That's not even on on the cards. But, you know, Malik Willis is doing some nice things here. And, you know, and Charles is one of those guys that always skews positive as well. But even he is sort of saying, hey, remember, like, there's no chance this guy plays, particularly playing like this. If Pickett was going out there and spending three and a half seconds every time he drops back trying to make something happen, that's what it would be like. And you you can't really play at this level playing like that unless there's literally no other option available to the team. So the Steelers are going out there and saying, well, prove to me you're not going to do that. Go out there, get rid of the ball quickly, use your first read if necessary every time, and just prove to us that you can operate at a much quicker level because that's our big concern. We're actually not concerned with your athleticism and your ability to extend plays and your arm and whether you can read defenses and all those kinds of things. We're actually pretty comfortable with that. What we don't know is if you can be, we can do it all quickly enough to just to even get the position in the first place. So now we've seen him do it the first game and the second game. And okay, we're still in really limited sample size stuff. But this, this has been a performance that says, if we have to turn to pick it after a week, all right. Like I didn't think, I didn't think Pickett was going to sort of win himself the starting job. And I thought that Trubisky at some point, you know, four or five weeks was going to play his way to the bench. I think that time scale is now potentially shorter because of what we've seen from Pickett. I, I, that's my takeaway too. I mean, I think I think we see him sooner rather than later, Kenny Pickett. Uh, I'm just as far as defining what he is and determining what he is. We just got to pump the brakes on all that stuff. I, I don't even, you know, with Kenny Pickett, not that anybody's like putting him into the Hall of Fame or anything. Be excited. I mean, Pittsburgh fans should be excited. Um, I just always like the, um, when it's tweeted out here, the preseason hype reminder, what Daniel Jones, reminder what Daniel Jones did as a rookie. We had analysts, Dan O, who were apologizing to him. People who doubted Daniel Jones during the draft process, like Dan Orlovsky, apologizing to Daniel Jones because he was tearing it up in preseason. Statistically, by the way, not, not necessarily from a grading standpoint, but statistically. Daniel Jones in the preseason, in his rookie season, went 29 for 34. That's five incompletions. Pretty good. Imagine this as a game. 29 for 34 for 416, two touchdowns, no picks, 137 passer rating. Had some big time throws. He actually got the name Danny Dimes. That's when Danny Dimes showed up. That's 2019 when Danny Dimes preseason. Was born. That's when it was that's when he was born. Preseason. <laughs> Granted, he's got one preseason big time throw since then, and he's ranked in the bottom three in the league over the last couple of years. But that was the preseason hype. Daniel Jones. Five incompletions. Two touchdowns, 12 yards per attempt. The dude was going to be unstoppable. But, you know, Daniel Jones has been a below average starter. That's yes. what he's been. So just, you know, pump the brakes on it. Zach Wilson, I was, I was jumping through the roof. I was ready to watch Zach Wilson be the top rookie last year. You know, mm. maybe Trevor Lawrence is going to overtake him at some point. But I was ready for Zach Wilson. And he looked completely lost for yeah, the majority I mean, of last year. I think overall the takeaway for preseason should be there are very, very few players – for whom you are completely changing what you think about them entirely, you know? Romeo Dobbs is probably one of those players where already, you know, we talked before about 
the, the Dak Prescotts of the world, those guys, where it, it's clear immediately that everybody's got it wrong. You know, Dak Prescott comes in, training camp preseason, it's immediately obvious that he shouldn't have been a fourth round pick. Right. That we just screwed that up. Everybody, the league, the league, every draft analyst, anyone that didn't think that Dak Prescott was a first round draft pick at the time, at draft time, was just wrong. And it was almost immediately obvious that that was the case. I think there are generally very, very few players for whom that is true, but every, like, and but Romeo Dobbs might be one of them, where immediately, as soon as training camp starts, oh, wow, this Romeo Dobbs guy looks pretty good. And every step of the way, it's like, hey, we did, this guy should not have been a fir- uh, fourth rounder. He's going to be legit. Now, again, it, it's, it's early. Maybe that will prove not to be the case as well. But that should be seen as the exception rather than the rule, even for impressive preseason performers. Um, what I think you can do is slightly change the overall narrative or the or a specific narrative. So with Kenny Pickett, it shouldn't be completely changing what you think about Kenny Pickett. You know, you shouldn't be immediately looking at these first couple of preseason games going, oh, wow, forget what we thought. This is Kenny Pickett's as good as any quarterback we've seen come into the draft for the last, you know, five years. He's every bit the legit prospect these guys were. It's like, no, like what we're seeing now is, okay, maybe he's still not a great quarterback prospect, but the thing that we were concerned about, the speed of his process it looks really good like maybe let's just tap the brakes yeah. on that maybe that's not going to be a huge problem i still even with what we're seeing now i wouldn't expect him to go out there if he starts as a rookie and post like a ben roethlisberger fastest average time to throw in the nfl i still expect him to be one of the slower quarterbacks in the league on average but now i'm no longer thinking it's going to be three and a half seconds a play and com- you know complete it's going to be the reason that he can't function so Average just time throws that one point nine one. I mean, it's it's almost like uh, Kenny's been listening to our show. He's like, I'll show them. But I honestly think the Steelers are Steelers. out there saying, show that you can do this. Yeah. You know, or at least maybe they're not even telling him. Maybe they're just saying, okay, let's see if he can do this because this is the thing that's going to hold him back. Either way, it's impressive. And look, maybe maybe the Steelers are just good at developing and teaching and all that stuff. And I because I, Mitchell Trubisky. I know you sent me that play. I was watching that live too, where Trubisky, you know, scrambled out and should have been sacked three times and yeah. then threw it up and it almost got caught, but it also also almost got intercepted. It was like, yeah, that was that was impressive. <laughs> but Trubisky looks half decent too out there. I, I I think the Steelers, if if we're honest, based off Big Ben's performance last year and the grade that we gave him in the fifties, they should be better. They there's a chance they're they're better at quarterback, right? Even though Mitchell, if you said on paper, is Trubisky better than Ben Roethlisberger? No, but Trubisky's full seasons have been better than the full season that Big Ben put together last year. And Kenny Pickett, if he graded in the 60s as a rookie, okay, that's not crazy. Steelers probably better at quarterback this year than last year without the Big Ben limitations of really you don't want him. He he can't move. Mm. He's got to get rid of the ball. He's got to get he's got to protect the offensive line. Steelers might have a decent offense compared to last year, where it was really painful, you know, fourth and ten check downs and stuff like that. Yeah. It was painful to watch. That Browns game on Monday Night Football where neither team could move the ball that essentially vaulted the Steelers into the playoffs, there were some painful offensive performances last year from the Steelers. I think they might be better now with, with your boy George Pickens and all that stuff, the additions that they've made in Pittsburgh. That's where I think my takeaway is with not just Pickett, but also Trubisky, a little bit of Rudolph through these these first two games. Yeah, it's possible. I mean, I, I just think that Pickett is now showing that he is an option going into this season, which I didn't think yeah. was necessarily going to be the case. 